one, cheering to God. I, uh, for those of you who got the, uh, the text that I wasn't going to, we got two texts. One, I wasn't going to be, we wasn't going to have an in-church service. And those of you who know me, I mean, who belongs to living faith, know the reason for that. And the second was that uh, we were going to do something a little different. What, what was going to happen was uh, uh, going to play one of the old uh, messages. And I woke up this morning and said, no, that's not the way you do it. I uh, was sitting here thinking, I like to watch old movies, especially ones that uh, got a message in them. I don't like to watch old movies that uh, where you got people running around with their eyes hanging out the head. And, and that's supposed to be entertainment and the teeth longer than the arm. I don't see that as entertainment. But this morning, I uh, thought a lot about an old movie where this young man was raised in, raised in the country. And he got drafted during World War II to the army. Well, when they, uh, he refused to, to uh, pick up a rifle. And of course, he got called, you know, coward, all kinds of names and stuff. And his uh, sergeant said, let me talk to him. So he asked him, what was the reason? He said, because I, I believe in the Bible. He said, well, we all do. He said, well, I believe in the Bible. And the Bible said, thou should not kill. Therefore, if I pick up a gun, I won't be tempted to kill somebody. So I'm not going to pick up the rifle. He said, well, you know, not to pick up the rifle, you can actually be uh, uh, you could actually be uh, coke marshal. And he said, why? I didn't say I didn't want to be in the army. I just said I didn't want to pick up no rifle. He said, well, what would you like to do? I would like to uh, do what I always do. And that's, uh, I like to help other people. I like to uh, share the word of God with people. He said, I think I know what we can do then. So they trained him to be a medic. And he was, he became a medic, a good medic. But the one thing what he became known for that when uh, he would never, uh, whoever, whenever a person was wounded, got hurt on the battlefield, he would always get to that person. And then if, there's, if they were dying, he would make sure that he prayed with them. If they wasn't dying, he would give them encouragement through the word of God and that he would, uh, uh, and in one situation, they was fighting the Japanese and they had to climb up on this hill, on this mountain, actually. And the commander, the commander uh, uh, of that particular uh, unit came by and said, I thought I'd give y'all orders to go up on the hill and, and, the, and the person in charge of the, uh, the commanding officer that was in charge, the lieutenant said, we are going over the hills. Well, what are you waiting on? He said, that man over there. And he said, what, what's so special about him? He said, all the men you see out there, not one of them gonna move unless that man move. If he don't go with them, they ain't going. And he said, uh, uh, he said, do they know what'll happen to them? And he said, they know, but all he wanna do as he always do, he pray before we go in the battle. And that's what he's doing. And the commander, uh, of course, had never heard of nothing like that, but they went up on the mountain. They went up there and it was a, on, uh, it was a slaughter. I mean, actually a lot of people got killed, but each and every one of them that he could get to, he got to them. So when everybody came down off of the mountain, they were doing a body count, a head count really, uh, and they asked about the uh, young man, and they said, well, last I saw him, he was up on the hill praying with somebody. And they said, well, go and see, go back up there. I want some volunteers to go up there to see, can they find him? And he, and uh, the volunteers had several who just volunteered, and we were going to get him. And when they got, got up there, 
he was holding the hand of a young man who uh, had been shot several times. But the amazing thing about it is that he had been shot also. He was wounded, but he refused to come down off the hill until somebody came and got this young man and came and got him. My, my story is real simple. Uh, I'm talking to you this morning and uh, I'm ill. And uh, having some problems. But I'm going to do my job. You have to excuse me. So I want you to start it off this morning with uh, a song. I want you to sing it with me because you know I'm not a singer. I tell you that all the time that you could put me in the shower. And it still wouldn't help. Title of the song, for those of you who uh, is Have Thy Own Way, Lord. I was going to try to sing it, but I'm not. I'm just going to read the, the first and the third stanza, which says, Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Thy are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me the third one. I'm gonna just go to the third one and say, Have that, have that own way, Lord. Have that own way. Wounded and weary, help me. I pray. Power, all power, surely. Is thy touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Let's say amen. Now, when I get that magnificent boys that y'all are expecting, then I'll sing it, okay? Our scripture today will come from. Corinthians. Twelfth chapter. We're gonna start with the sixth verse. This is Paul talking, and he says, "We read the New International." He says, "Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I will be speaking the truth." But I refrain, so no one can even will, will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassing great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my side, I mean in my flesh, I'm sorry. My mess, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take this away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Mm -hmm. I want you to put your uh, thoughts on that particular part of the scripture, say, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in prosecution, in, uh, in difficult. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. So my message for today, 
It's real simple, but I think you understand what I'm saying. I told you about that young man. They considered this young man to be real weak because he stood up for the Lord. Even in the middle of battle, nobody, I'm sure of it. I never, I was never, I didn't, I almost went, but didn't go. Not my fault, but because of uh, circumstances. Uh, didn't go to the army, but, I'm, but I've been in some fights. And I tell you, uh, being in a battle is not, not easy, whether you win or not. Unless you, when you get in a fight with somebody, if you don't knock them out on the first round, then you can expect to get two or three licks of yourself. So it's not a, 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 a great fight. Uh, you will get hurt. But Paul was talking about what it's like to be as a Christian. And as a man, because in this society, we got clowns who run around. I'm not afraid of anything. I don't respect the law. And I don't have to ask God to forgive me, uh, forgive me for anything that I've done because I haven't done anything that I should be asked the Lord for forgiveness. Uh, yeah, that's that's part of the message out there. Uh, but we, uh, as Christ, Paul was showing you, that even in weakness, you got to be strong. And a good example, you ladies will understand better than, than a man, whatever. When you uh, having your child, you are at your weakest moment. But that's when you also your strongest because of the fact your mind is not necessarily on yourself, but, but how, what going to happen to my child? Is my child going to be born? strong and and alive. Uh, also, this morning I want, as I go on with my message, uh, I want to thank everybody who made the donation to the cheering fund for my birthday. I really appreciate it. I had someone sent them a, uh, a donation uh, yesterday. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm pretty sure there'll be others so that we can do things without cheering. Uh, great things. And then we had, uh, I won't go into detail of what it is that we're trying to do. I also want to thank uh, uh, all of the people who is making sure that the program is going on and meet every Thursday. If your child haven't been there, they're missing out on a wonderful thing. Uh, so uh, I want to take time to thank you for that. I also want to thank you for your prayers for my uh, three of my children lost a um, mother the other day. And uh, that was a different time in my life, but but nevertheless, my she's my ex-wife, but they lost a mother. And uh, so that stays on my mind. But right now they 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 all they all say that they okay. They just uh, suffering all of the different uh, levels that we that we uh, suffer when someone in our life and past. Today, we're going to talk about responding to splendors. Yes, splendors, you know, splendors you get in your thumb, splendors you get in your hand. Sometimes you get them in your, uh, get them in your feet, in your life, splendors in your life. Now, question I'm asking this morning, have you ever had a splendor in your finger, uh, a rock in your shoe, mm -hmm. and you know what that can be like, mm -hmm. especially uh, if it's in your, uh, if it's in your thumb, you can, uh, there are times that I've known and be in mind that, uh, uh, and it kind of pushes itself into the skin. So then you don't just pull it out, you have to dig it out, and that's painful in itself. Then you got to worry about whether it's gonna get infected or not. The other time is you got a pebble or something in your shoe, it usually don't start hurting you until you get around people and you want to pull your shoe off. There's nowhere to pull it off, but uh, pull your shoe off. So you got to stand there and look like nothing wrong with you. That, that's the way life is. Now, not all our problems are, are, are that little, or they can be easily removed. Sometimes they accomplish uh, accomplish us 
all our years. That's what Paul was talking about. He has three times during his lifetime to remove uh, remove the, uh, I'm going to call it his splendor. He called it thorn in his side, I mean, in his flesh. And uh, consequences may not be in our control, but our response here, listen at that. Cause the con how it happened sometimes is not in our, we, we don't have no control over that. But how we respond to it, that is very uh, important. And that's one of the reasons, uh, church, I decided to do this. Uh, 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 we're doing it by media, but I decided to do it because of the fact uh, it's, that's my response to whatever's going on with me. And if you notice, I haven't talked about what it is going on with me. That's not the purpose of this message. This message is to get you to encourage you that regardless of what pain or what rock or whatever, and I respond to it in the way that I understand that God want me to, uh, uh, to uh, respond to it. I got people who keep trying to tell me how to do, how to deal with my problem, whatever. I appreciate their opinion or whatever, but I know what makes me comfortable, you know, what makes me feel good. And as long as I know I'm doing it in the name of Jesus, then uh, uh, I'm going to be all right. Paul had, a, as I said, a splendor in his life. And we're not told what it is uh, uh, for uh, 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 who. It could have been a who, y'all. See, we always thought of it. You know, he said a thorn. We thought that it could be, uh, uh, you know, like them thorns that be in them rose bushes and stuff. No, it could be a who. Because some people can be in you. Uh, there's some people in your life you just wish you, you, you wish they could just disappear. But God said, no, my grace is sufficient. And whoever that is, you just gonna have to deal with it, bro. And that's what he did. Uh, but it tormented. But at the same time, like my illness, it you feel tormented at times, and you even ask the question why. You even ask the question why. It doesn't mean a person if your situation in your life is kind of bad, and you ask the question why. Is that you ask them for understanding? It doesn't mean you give up, up your faith or you push your you you don't give up on your faith. Uh, they say uh, this. Uh, what I'm reading here, you say he prayed three times for it to be removed, but God prom promised only grace, explaining that His power is perfect in perfect in weakness. Here's the key to this. First of all, church, we have to come to church. We have to, when certain words are used, stop coming to church just to hear the preacher. Uh, uh, come and hear the preacher preach. Come there to learn. Because you might be in a situation where you going to have to uh, be someone to go counsel, that counsel someone. Understand, explain. Uh, I, I'm not going to even tell you what grace means. I'm going to let you look it up. But only grace. God told him, say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to promise you only grace. And when I was, when our strength is lacking, we began to discover God is enough. God is enough. Now, yesterday, uh, church, uh, for two days now, I think it's two or more days, I haven't eaten a meal. But this morning, I kept wrestling with it. That was thing that I couldn't do for myself this morning. I was able to do it this morning. And that's because of the fact that you say my grace and my, uh, and it also means that you got to persevere. Mm. You got to say, I can do all things, huh? Through him, not through you. Is that right? I'm going to let you finish that out, too. See, we can brave hardship and sorrow. Because the Almighty, Almighty God is with us, promising our monetary uh, 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 light and bad affliction that that is being produced in our life for the eternal weight of God of of, uh, of glory for beyond all comparison. That's in the scripture. The scripture said in Second Corinthians four and seventeen. Read it. It says, "In suffering, we can 
grow closer to him and endurance has its perfect result so that we may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. That's James 1 and 4. Paul embraced that uh, response, uh, respond to the splendors in his life. And whether it's in a festival, you know, we party today and tomorrow, uh, you know, uh, there's nothing in, in your life that uh, want, they're going to entice you or move you to want to do anything, really. But then there also tomorrow, whether it's in bad time or good times, and I'm breaking it down in two different ways, okay? And even when insulted and prosecuted for the, for the sake of Christ, are prosecuted because of the fact of who you are, uh, the apostle rejoiced in his weakness because he learned the secrets of contentment. He learned the, sentiment, the, uh, the secrets of contentment. And I'm going to share this with you. I want you to take this with you today. I want you to continue to do what you're doing. I really appreciate y'all carrying on the church. I really uh, appreciate y'all uh, supporting uh, Ella Moore and in, in, in her effort to try to uh, help me and, and, and help the church. I want to thank my brothers who came by here and who had to actually pick me up my entire body off the ground so that I could uh, uh, get in the car to go to, so I could be driven to uh, Jackson. We got the result from the MRI, still on, uh, don't understand them, but I go in the morning to my uh, primary doctor and hopefully he can give me some insights on what's going on. But nevertheless, what did I say? I can do all things. This is the secret of contentment. I can do all things through him who strengthened me. That's in Philippians 4, 12 and 13. And this can be true for you as well as mine. So I appreciate your prayers. Keep on praying. There's not enough prayer. And I really, uh, regardless of uh, my children, my oldest children, my three oldest children, uh, regardless of the fact that I'm a uh, day to lost their mother, they, uh, they have taken the time to actually come up here and do things for me. And I really appreciate that. That's the other thing about splendors. If there's a splendor in your family, pull it out of your finger. I didn't say uh, I didn't say get rid of the person, but pull it out of your finger, you know, and you and and talk to them, uh, share the word of God with them, and who knows? Uh, instead of being uh, a thorn in your side, they can just be a memory. Mm -hmm. That pain don't have to don't have to last always. Now, uh, y'all have a blessed day. Uh, I'm going to see if I can eat something. I ate an orange this morning, so praise God. I ate an orange this morning. I'm going to see if I can eat something else. But in the meantime, y'all have a blessed day.